welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic in what I strongly suspect will not be the actual video that goes out live this afternoon. Um, and that is because this puzzle on screen is called Double the Heat by Jay Dyer. And I don't know much about this puzzle, except I've just looked it up on Logic Masters Germany and it hasn't had been solved enough times uh, to warrant a rating even. Um, and some of the comments suggested it was very hard indeed. <laughs> Many of the usual suspects that almost solve every puzzle on Logic Masters Germany had not solved this either. So I think this one is a monster, um, but apparently it's been recommended or requested a few times. So I'm very happy to do it. Jay Dyer is an absolute, well, genius constructor. She is an amazing, amazing brain. Um, and this one involves doublers, which are <laughs> the, the new term in Sudoku that fills me with fear. Anyway, before um, before I get started and read you the rules of this one, a lot of very, <laughs> very short thermos as well, which are a bit disconcerting. Let me talk to you. We've got we've got our Kickstarter going on. Let me find that. Here we are. This is the campaign to make. Whoops. Let's see if I can move this. I can move it a little bit to make Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits Volume 2, a new book. Um, it's going to be absolutely splendid. Nearly 3,000 of you have supported the Kickstarter so far. Thank you so much if you're one of those people. Do go over there, by the way, and vote for your, um, your favorite puzzle uh, to be included in the book. I think that there is now a list of the puzzles that we propose to include. Um, and so you can now add to that with the community chosen puzzles go that are going to be added. Um, and if we keep hitting stretch goals, we'll, we'll add more puzzles too. So yeah, if you've, if you've thought about getting hold of the book, it's definitely worth doing. It will be one of the greatest well, puzzle books in existence that we guarantee. Um, other than that, what do I tell you? Well, I've got names for you and news about Patreon. So let me read out some names from these solvers all correctly solved all 14 of the puzzles in the October monthly reward. Duality by the Sudoku Skunk Works. Um, so very well done to Andrew Cameron, uh, Simon Dixie, Parker Bond, Michael Stranieri, Joe Pahl, Matt Shapiro, B1 Trash? Or is that Bone Trash? Ooh, I don't know. One of those things. Uh, Neil Harrington, Austin Miller, uh, Melinda Kozel, Ben Verkhoven, Eric Hoff, uh, Danielle, with lots of help from Colin, she wrote, um, Matthias Holter, and Valentin Lorin. Oh, Lorin, yeah, Lorin. Oh, that's probably better. Um, all of you, very well done. The other thing we've got going on on Patreon, by the way, until the 31st of October is a competition to send in your solution guide to Shy and Jovial's puzzle called Another Language. It's a classic Sudoku. It's weird and wonderful and beautiful and yeah, uh, it's magnificent, but it is hard to understand. And if you've solved it or you think you might understand how to solve it, write it down an email to us and send it over. And we're going to decide on a winner at the end of the month. Um, definitely worth looking at. And I can tell you that Mark and I have been busy testing uh, November's monthly reward, um, which is themed around Hercules and his 12 labors and is from the same team who bought you the puzzle pyramid last year, which should give you an idea of the sort of quality that we're thinking about. It should be fabulous. And the only other new news is to say happy birthday to Gabriel Bush. And that's from Layla. Um, Layla wrote that you'd have a rough, a rough year, Gabriel, and uh, we all hope things are looking up for you now. And I hope that a birthday wish from Cracking the Cryptic is, well, is a present that you will at least enjoy for a moment or two before you tuck in to your cake. Now, let me read you the rules of Double the Heat by Jay Dyer. <laughs> I'm so conscious as I'm doing this that um, I'm probably, you know, th th this time is going to be sunk and then I'm going to have to start a new puzzle. So, but anyway, let, let me read you the rules anyway. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along a thermometer increase from the bulb end. I mean, this is comedy in this puzzle. It is literally comedy because these thermos, as you can see, are all two cells long. So if that's a three, this cell could be four, five, six, seven, eight. It can't be nine in this instance, but you get the idea. I mean, if pencil mark was doing this puzzle, the grid would be very busy indeed. Let's just call it that. 
But it doesn't stop there. It gets more difficult because it then says nine cells in the grid, one per row, column and box are doublers, which count as double their value on thermometers. Each digit appears in exactly one doubler. Right, so th what that's saying is that in this row somewhere, there is a cell. Let's make it that cell. Now that cell is probably a bad choice because it's not on a thermometer. I don't don't read from the rules that I that it's necessarily the case that all doublers are on thermometers. I think what it's saying though is that if if a doubler is on a thermometer, let's put it on there, then it's saying it counts as double its value for the purposes of the thermometer. So let's make this a three. So although this is written as a three, because it's in a doubler cell, it would count as a six. So this cell would have to be higher than six and therefore have to be seven, eight or nine, I think is how it works. Oh, no, okay, I just had a I just had a horrible moment when I thought, ah, what if this cell was also a doubler? But that can't happen because I'm only only allowed to put one doubler per box, per row, and per column. And each digit has to be doubled twice. Oh no, each digit's doubled once, sorry. <laughs> Got twice on the brain from the word doublers. Um, but what that means is let's say we worked out that this cell was a doubler. Now if that cell's a doubler, it could not be a three because we'd already doubled the three up here. So this would have to be another another digit doubled. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see what double the heat is all about. Um, this is actually terrifying, to be honest, because there's so little to go on. I can put some pencil mark ones in there uh, and pencil mark ones in there. Now, ordinarily, I would instantly. Oh, <laughs> I can't get a digit. I've got a digit. OK, ordinarily, I was going to say you can't possibly put a one on the tip of a thermometer. But then in this puzzle, it occurred to me you could. But I, oh, actually, you can't in this puzzle. Oh, no, you could. No, actually, you can't in this puzzle, full stop, because each of these thermos is only two cells. And I think in every instance where thermometers are not in a box together, like when they cross boxes like these two, it looks like the bulb is always looking at a one anyway. So even with doublers, we wouldn't have been able to put a one here because this cell, even if it's even if this is doubled, I simply can't put a one in here. That won't work. So in this puzzle, it is reasonable for us to say that we can't put ones on the tips of thermometers. So let's see if I can take this further. The weird thing about this is I'm actually a bit surprised I got a digit really quickly because this puzzle is clearly brutal. So that can't be a one because even if it's doubled, that that then would still that well one doubled is two. So we'd have to put one in the bulb and we can't. So that's not a one. Um, I will pencil mark the fact that there's a one in three positions. Why not? But for some reason, my brain says I shouldn't pencil mark. The one can go in four different positions. That seems a bit excessive. So I get five ones. And I get a fairly unpleasant pattern of ones left. Right, twos then. Twos, no, actually, let's try nines instead. The two digits I always view of, uh, or I always view as the most restricted on thermometers are ones and nines because, um, oh no, okay, my brain is catching up with my mouth. Well, it's true. In a normal thermometer puzzle, that is a true thing to say because a nine ordinarily could never go anywhere on a thermo apart from in the, in the tip. Because if you tried to put a nine halfway along a thermo. Now these thermos don't really have a halfway concept. Let's try and put a nine in there. Ordinarily, you wouldn't have the ability to fill this cell in because it would have to be a 10. But here, of course, it's absolutely fine to put a nine in a bulb. This, which this is even more terrifying because if you can put nine in a bulb, then actually that cell could be as little as five 
because 5 doubled is 10. So if that was a doubled cell, yeah, we're happy to go, aren't we? And it could be 6, 7, or even 8. The thing it couldn't be is 9, because that would repeat the 9. Um, so I think my instinct to start looking at 9s was completely wrong. So maybe it is 2s then, although we don't seem to have very many of those. So if... No, it's very normal for that to be a 2. Then literally that could be anything. 2. If you... Oh, no. Okay. And if I was about to say, well, I can't put 2 here because I can't put 1 here. But that that's not even true in this puzzle. If that's a 2 and it's doubled, that counts as a 4. And that could be a, th whoops, not a grey, it could be a three. Oh, this is absurd. This is absolutely absurd. Okay, well, I've got one thing left to suggest here. Because, because this is, a, this is just crazy. The only other thing I'm thinking is there's some sort of set theory going on because that is the only thing I am aware of in Sudoku that can yield sort of magic, if you like, from positions that look completely intractable. And I've done a puzzle before. I can't remember who it was by, but it was a puzzle that had a lot of one cell thermometers in it. And you could put the bulbs and the tips in different sets, which is looking like it might be possible here, actually. If you look at, well, I was going to say column two and column eight, but actually I'm going to expand that. I'm going to include column five as well. So let's just highlight those cells for a moment. And then highlight row 2, row 5 and row 8. Now, what's going on there? And I'm only going to explain this if I can see anything interesting. I mean, the thing I am seeing from doing this is that I've got a lot of I've got an awful lot of bulbs in blue, which is what I was trying to do. And I've got an awful lot of tips in orange, which is what I was trying to do. But I've also picked up some stragglers here. Although the stragglers are... Oh, look, the threes are matching. Ah, all right, okay. Right, so this is, I think, going to be important. So let me explain what on earth I'm doing here. And, oh... Hang on, hang on, on my desk, underneath all the papers, I have a blue bag of tiles with numbers on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, I'm going to talk about these uh, blue cells that I've got highlighted in the grid. Now, let's go back one sec, just look at the blue cells. Now, we, might, we may not know the order of the digits in these columns, but we do know exactly what the blue cells as a set comprise, because this is a complete column of the Sudoku, and so is this, and so is this. And we know that each column of the Sudoku, if correctly completed, contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. So we know that these 27 cells that we've got highlighted here are three sets of the digits 1 to 9. So those, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write those 27 digits. So there's going to be three tiles with the digit 1, three tiles with the digit 2, three tiles with the digit 3, three tiles all the way through to digit 9. And I've, I've put them in this bag. So let's imagine that's what I've done. I mean, I did it. I just did it very quickly. Um, so that's what we've got in this bag. Now, I'm now going to highlight this row, this row, and this row in orange 
and I've got an orange bag here with numbers in. There are, let's imagine there are 27 orange tiles in here with the numbers in the orange rows in. So if we were to actually compare the contents of the blue bag and the contents of the orange bag, we would find we had exactly the same things in both because we've got three sets of the digits one to nine in both. Our 27 digits are identical because the contents of three rows of the Sudoku is exactly the same as the contents of three columns of the Sudoku. Now, imagine you, you knew um, what the finished solution to this puzzle was. And imagine you knew that that digit was, let's say, an eight. So imagine that I, I then rummaged around in my orange bag for an eight tile, and I rummaged around in my blue bag for an eight tile. And I found the eight tiles in both, what, just one tile with an eight on it and one tile with an eight from the blue, and I threw them out of both bags. Would it be true to say that the contents of both bags were still exactly the same? Well, of course it would, because we had the same thing in before, and we took out the same tile from both. So the 26 tiles left in the blue bag must contain the same numbers as the 26 tiles left in the orange bag. In other words, it doesn't matter that I don't know what this digit is. I know that if I remove this from both sets, both bags, move those four digits, in fact, look, there's some more in here. If I move all of these digits with that are in both bags, if I remove them all like that, whatever's left, whatever's left in orange, is exa they're exactly the same tiles as what I've got in blue. But actually, this is where it, it, it looks suspicious to me, because if we, if we now stare at this hard, there is a blue one tile with a one on it left in my blue bag, but there is an orange tile with a one on it left in my blue bag. So I'm gonna go and hunt for those tiles and throw them out of both bags. And when I do that, of course, the contents of both bags is still the same. I took the same thing out yet again. There's a two blue and there's a two orange. I'm gonna take those out of both bags. There's a three orange and a three blue. I'm taking those out of both bags. There's another one orange, there's another one blue. I'm taking those out of both bags. There's a nine blue and a nine orange. I'm taking those out of both bags. Right, okay, and this is so weird. But what are we left with in both bags now? And on the face of it, we've got something really, really, really peculiar. It's actually comedy how, how stupid it is. <laughs> because in my blue bag now, I've got 13 tiles left. And in my orange bag, therefore, I've got 13 tiles left because they're the same numbers. But there's a paradox here. Because the 13 tiles or digits that I have left in my blue set are all in the bulbs of thermometers. But the 13 tiles I have left in my orange set, which are the same numbers, don't forget, are all in the tips of thermometers. <laughs> and that's impossible. <laughs> that's clearly impossible. And the way to realize it's impossible, I suppose, is to just think about maths. So if we were to try and come up with um, the total for the blue tiles, it doesn't matter what number, let's say they added up to 50. I've no idea what they're gonna add up to, but let's say it's 50. Well, whatever they were, we know that this tile is at least one more in quantum bigger than this, because that's how thermometers work. So the quantum of our orange tiles needs to be at least 13 greater than the contents of our blue tiles in order for the thermos to work. And yet we're doing it with the same digits. So, so the doublers are somehow <laughs> equalizing the sums. That's, that is a weird, weird idea. And I love it. I love it as an idea. I've no idea what it is I'm meant to do with that knowledge. But this is clearly important because suddenly from the gibberish we had at the start, we have now got to a position where we have learned something 
really, I think, truly fundamental about the, uh, the grid, we have learned that I can put the same digits in the tips of thermometers as are in the bulbs of those same thermometers. And using doublers, I can, I can make it work. Now, how, how do we make it work? Ooh, right. Okay, well, I've just seen something interesting, which is that my blue and orange bags of tiles don't have ones in them anywhere. Gosh, this is going to be complicated to keep track of this because if we look at the row two, it sees a one. Row five sees a one. Row eight sees a one. That tells us immediately that there's no ones in the orange bag, which immediately, because of the, the concept of the bags containing the same digits, tells us the blues don't have any ones in them. But actually, we could have seen that. These ones that we've got in the grid are already sort of eliminating ones from the blue. So, how do we do this? I've got to equalize the sums. So, I've got to make sure that whatever, however we do this, the doublers, the doublers, there must be more than one doubler. I could tell you that there must be more than one doubler to equate these things together because even if I made one of the digits a double nine, that would only increase the count of the oranges. So at the moment, the count of the oranges, if we add up all the digits in orange and the count of the blues, is the same because it's the same digits. So if I increase the count of the, oran the oranges by having one doubler only, and I make that the biggest number that can be doubled, which would be a double nine, then I've increased the count of the oranges by nine, because I've turned the nine into an 18 in effect. But I know because of the structure of the thermos that I must add at least at least 13 to the value of orange in order for the maths of the the fact I've got sort of 13 bulbs that have to become 13 tips and each one of those thermos individually must have at least one difference between the bulb and the tip so so I must have more than one doubler. Right, here's something then. I must have more than one doubler, but I can't have more than three doublers in the tips because there are only three rows of tips and I'm only allowed to put one doubler in a row. Right, so I've got one... I've got to have at least two of these three rows doubled. Or when I say doubled, a digit in at least two of these three rows has to be doubled. Um, which is all very well. I don't actually see how to, do, I still, I'm so sorry, I still don't see how to do this. Um, I can't see how to get a handle on where the doublers must be or how big they must be. It feels to me like I'm being asked to say have a thermometer with a two and a three on it. 
and then another thermometer with a three and a four on it, another thermometer with a four and a five on it, and that keeps going. But then, ah, uh, uh, how is it that I'm meant to think about this properly? What do you do? What do you do? It, we know there's no one on these thermometers, but what, what do you do with a two on a thermometer? Because the thing about that is, let me just try and put a two in the grid somewhere where I can actually put a two. I could put a, actually I don't want to clash it with a three. Um, it's interesting that that's actually quite hard. Let's put two here, just for a moment. Now the moment I hypothesize that there is a two in a bulb. The problem I see with that is that now I have to put a two in orange, which is a, which we know is a tip. But the two in the tip is never going to be bigger. So, so yeah, because we know that orange and blue are the same digits, if I put two in a, in a bulb, I have to put two in a tip somewhere. Now that, let's just put two here as the equivalent of this two. So now we've got a two in blue and a two in orange, which is absolutely what we should have if we're saying there's a two in blue. But now what digit do I put in here? Because I can't put one in any of these bulbs or any of these tips. So the only way this is going to work is, you've guessed it, yeah, that's got to be doubled. And if that's doubled, that cell can't be a two, because that's going to repeat two in the box, and it can't be a one, so that has to be a three. So if we have, so if we put a two, anywhere in a bulb, i.e. anywhere anywhere in a coloured cell in the puzzle, we can immediately say that there is a double two in a tip somewhere. And if, if we say that there's a double two in a tip, but then do I have to, how do I deal with the fact that I've now got a three in a bulb? Oh, oh, well, here's, here's a weird thing. Here's a weird thing. That's, this is, this is right. Okay, let's, so let's continue. No, let's continue thinking about twos. If we, if we say there is a two in a bulb in the puzzle, could there be another two in the bulb in this in a, in a different bulb in this puzzle? Well, the answer is no. Not because of Sudoku. I think I could put one there, for example. But because of the doubler problem that we've now got. Because now, if I put two twos in bulbs, I have to put two twos in tips. Now, I can put one two in a tip and double it and put a three in the bulb. That's fine. But the second two that I try and put in a bulb, uh, sorry, in a, on a tip, let's put it there. Seems to be a reasonable place to put it. Not ruled out by Sudoku. We know that we can't put ones in any colored cell. So there is nothing I can do with this digit. It's impossible to fill in. And the, uh, right, the thing that I think is really sort of making me think in that regard is that that, that logic is independent of the value of the lowest digit in in the coloured cells, isn't it? Because if, if this was three instead, it doesn't make any difference. Because if we if we suddenly say, let's just let's just prove this to ourselves, if we say on the other hand that the lowest digit in a bulb is a three, so or then I've got to put three in an orange cell. Let's put it there. Now this cell has to, we've said three is the lowest digit in the colors. So this cell now, 
well it can't be three it can't be two and it can't be one because three is the lowest and you can't repeat three in the box so this has to be doubled so this would then be able to be as this is counting a six this would be well it can't be no it can't be one two or three so if that counts as six this would be four or five um but but we still can't have another three in the puzzle because if we do we've got to put another three in a tip and it's not going to work whoops i know i know that can't be a three but just ignore this three here it doesn't for the logic it doesn't matter because this one is going to have to be a digit lower than three and it's not allowed to be because we define three as our lowest digit so this is this is wrong well no it's wrong to have two low digits in the puzzle so whatever the lowest digit is in blue there is one of it in blue and therefore one of it in orange so maybe we can do some can we do that with the high digits as well? Oh, hang on. If I've got to get to 13. Um, I'm not sure. I was just thinking if I've got to get to 13 difference between orange and blue. I'm only allowed one low digit to double. I, well, no, it's not that I'm not allowed. I'm allowed one low digit. I've got, there's got to be a low digit in blue. Whatever the set of digits is that makes up blue, even if it's really big numbers, the biggest numbers it could be would be, looks like fives, sixes, sevens, and eights, because I could, you know, there are five of whatever that, whatever digits it is we put into column eight. You can see I could, could I could put nine, eight, seven, six, and five in. So let's imagine that we do that, and we try and say that therefore five is the lowest blue digit. Um, no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work to have five as the lowest blue digit because if five is the lowest blue digit, there have to be two of it because in this column there are five bulbs, and in this column there are five bulbs. And I can't put two fives in bulbs if it's the lowest digit because, well, for the reasons that we just explained, you can't have two of the lowest digit existing. So, so what we're now saying, so let's say four is the lowest digit. If four is the lowest digit in the puzzle, I know it must exist in doubled form, which, which changes the sum of oranges to be four greater than the sum of blues. Ah, okay, so then if I had nine doubled on the high side, four plus nine is 13, and I'd only need two doublers to close the gap between the orange and the blue that must exist once doublers are taken into account, if you see what I mean. Yeah, okay. What I wanted to think about was high digits, though. So if the highest digit in blue is, I was about to say nine. No, it can be nine because I can double the tips. Let's just make that nine just for a moment so we can think about what that means. Because I think the same thought is quite interesting, isn't it? Once I put nine in a bulb... I have to put nine in a tip. No, actually, no, that's not going to be a sensible thought. No, the, okay, here's here's a different thought that is that is more sensible. Once I put nine in a bulb, I've got to put something in the tip that beats the nine. Yes, ah, okay. All right, so this, what this is telling me is that not only do I have to have a doubler to deal with the lowest digits on the bulbs, I have to have a doubler to deal with the highest digits on the bulbs. Because let's imagine that the highest digits on the bulbs was a seven. So I'm saying that looking at all these bulbs together, there was no digit higher than a seven. 
Well, this is still a problem for this digit, isn't it? Because this digit is not allowed to be more than seven because we've just defined seven as the highest digit. Yet it must be higher than it to, to fulfill its, its duties as a thermo digit. So this digit has to be doubled. Ah, <laughs> okay, which is fine. But that doesn't mean that there is only one seven. Because if there was another seven, there is no, this could be a four doubled, that could be a four doubled, and that could be a five doubled. And that would not preclude anything, I don't think. So, it's, so it, it doesn't work symmetrically. So although we can only have one of the lower digits, we can have as many as we want as the higher digits and just double all the digits that are along the thermo. We can't, well, we can't double too many because I'm only allowed to have three doublers in orange. So I could have a maximum of two of the higher digits, of the highest digits. Right. So how, how is this helping us? Answers on a postcard, please. This is helping us because... Uh, I realised I shouldn't have stopped talking then because my brain was saying, my brain is just not telling me anything. <sighs> brain, brain, wake up. What is that telling us? You can have one of the low digits and a maximum of two of the high digits. And then... It still doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like I've got enough doublers available, if I'm honest. That's what I don't like. The f I feel like I might have got something wrong here, actually. Because I think I'm always going to be running into problems, especially on the low end. Let me just try this again. So if we if we go back, let's go back to twos again. So if I put one two on a one two, whoa, I keep my blue. I'm going to put one two here. Then I've got to put a two. I've got to put a two now in a in an orange cell. Now, wherever I put that two, I've got to double it. We know that. And then this digit, which can't be a one or a two now, has to be a three. But then that three has to appear on a tip. Oh, I see. No, it can work. Right. Okay. Okay. Because I was, I was worrying. I was, I was thought I was going to run out of low digits. But it, you can do it. You've got just got to put the three there, haven't you? Which I know it can't go in on this particular puzzle. But I didn't have to put the two here, so this could be a three. So yeah. So what I'm thinking is that when you double the two, you've got to slot in a digit that's under two in the bulb. But then this this digit, whatever it is, is becoming quite close to the low digit. We know it's not the low digit, but it's still it's still creating troubles, isn't it? Because it the moment you put this digit in, it's got to exist at the tip of a thermo. And in this puzzle, well if we say two is the lowest digit, then the only place a three can exist in the tip of a thermo. Oh, oh, I suppose it could be, oh, does it have to be, hang on, or maybe it can be doubled as well, which I hadn't thought about. Ah, yeah, but it can't, well, it could be doubled, is the truth. If it's not doubled, then it has to be on the thermo with the two in the bulb. 
because two is the only digit lower than three. But if it's doubled, then it's counting as six, and it could be on a four or a five as well in that in the bulb. But it's still it's still iterative, isn't it? Because then once you do that, even if you double the three, and you can only we can only have three doublers here. There's not we are not living in a world of infinite doublers. <laughs> um, despite some of you setters out there who would wish we were. We're not living in a world of infinite doublers. So if I... I've only got three doublers to play with in the tips. It feels like I've not got enough room. I think I might have misunderstood this. I've got a horrible feeling I've not... I've not, not grasped this quite because I'm, what I'm worried about is that if I don't double the three, so let's say I do put the three on the two out two bulb, which is where it could go. Then, yeah, all right, let's try this argument then. So I've dealt, I've managed to deal with the three that I had on a bulb. I've managed to do it and I've done it without needing another doubler. Woohoo! So I'm free, I'm scot-free, and I've just got to deal with the rest of the digits, and I've got 11 more blue digits to deal with. So what's going to happen when I go and find the next lowest blue digit? Let's say it's a 4 in this cell. Well, I've dealt with the 2 and the 3 without needing another doubler, but the moment I put this 4 in a tip, let's put that here. I don't think it matters where it goes. You can see the problem. This, the problem is that if I've got no lowered, if I'm saying four is the lowest digit I've got left, so I'm not allowed to put threes and twos in here, the only way this four can exist is if it's doubled again to create room for a bulb. And again, that's going to give me so that's going to use up a doubler to do that. So, okay. Okay, I'm starting to believe I'm seeing this now. So what I've got to do... Yeah, what I've got to do is to create much, as much difference as I can. I've got I've got three doublers to play with. So yeah, okay, so If you double seven, for example, if we double seven, that gives us 14. Then I could put, I could put seven on the end of a nine, a nine bulb. So I put seven on the end of the nine bulb. Sorry, I'm going away from the microphone. I'm, I could put seven on the end of the nine bulb. So I've got a 14 on the end of a nine bulb, and that's fine. And then I could put the nine, the nine that would be in the bulb, that would need to be on a tip. So that could go with an eight on its bulb. And then I could put the eight, I could put the eight on the bulb of a seven. And no, the eight on the tip of a seven. And the seven, yes, okay, and that's, ah, right. Right, so that, that is, let's try five instead, because five is going to give me more bang for my buck, isn't it? Yes, this is cycles. It cycles, five gives me 10, 10 can go with nine, then nine, eight, eight, seven, hang on, five, five, 
I can put... F what? <laughs> Sorry. And I realise I'm not doing anyone any favours by not explaining what I'm trying to do here. What I'm fundamentally trying to do is to... is to somehow find a way of being able to allocate low digits, especially to the bulbs of the thermos, without needing an infinite number of, or at least more than three, doublers to create the thermos at all, given I've got to put the same digits on both. There is almost certainly a really, really elegant way of doing this, but my little old brain cannot figure out what it is. But what I am starting to appreciate is I can create cycles of digits. So what I'm thinking is, let me show you. If I put five in a bulb, no, if I put five on a tip and I double it, ignore any Sudoku implications of this, by the way. If I put five on a bulb and I double it, I've used one doubler of the maximum of three doublers I have at my disposal. That would allow me to put 9 in here. Now, this 9, we, na we know, has to now appear in, uh, in a tip somewhere, because it's a blue cell. So I'm going to put it there. Oh, ignore, ignore Sudoku. So I'm just going to put it there. Now, the 9 could have an 8 underneath it on its bulb. Now I need to find a home for the 8. I could put an 8 uh, here, in this tip. And then that could be a 7. And then I need to put seven in a tip. Let's put that there. And then I'm going to put six in a bulb. And then I could need to put a six in a tip. Let's put that here. And then this cell can be this five. I need a blue five. The moment I put the doubled five in here, I need a blue five. And that has created for the price, for the price, yeah, for the price of one doubler, I have created one, two, three, four, five whole thermos. Now compare this to how many thermos I managed to create when I did the two example, when I put two in a tip and doubled it. How many thermos did this create? And the answer is two, because I got a two here, that doubles to a value of four. I can put a three here, now I need to put the three in a tip somewhere. Let's put that there and I can put the two here. So this two, I got two thermos out of this one doubler. And that's not enough. It's nowhere near enough because I've only got three doublers to play with and I need to be getting more bang for my buck. But by using five, it's the most efficient number because five doubled gets me really close to nine and I can iterate downwards and I can get loads of extra thermos before I hit the five that I started with. Now, what I'm slightly not seeing is seven I don't think is going to work. So if I use a doubled four on a thermo, so now I'm suggesting we do something like this, and I double that. How many thermos do I get from this? This, this is counting as eight, so I could put seven here. And then I could do seven, six, ignore Sudoku, six, five, and then five, four. So I got one, two, three, I get four, I get four thermos from a double four. So I got five thermos from a double five. I can get four more thermos from a double four. That's nine, and I need, I've got 13 thermos to do. So I need another number that gives me four thermos. And that's presumably got to be six, does it? So six will give me, double six is not, double six is 12, which can go on a thermo with nine. Double six, so this is doubled. That goes on a thermo with a nine. Oh dear, 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 hang on. 
that goes on there with a 9. Then I can put the 9 with an 8, the 8 with a 7, the 7 with a 6. I get four thermos. So this is it. This is it. The only way, I believe, of making enough... Well, making our doublers do enough work to create 13 thermos is if we exactly double the digits 5, 6 and 4 and then we have lots of iterating one gap thermos between the edges we create so if we do have a 6 with a 9 6 doubled on a 9 9 bulb thermo then we have to have 9 with 8 on another thermo we have to have 8 with 7 on another thermo we have to have 7 with 6 on another thermo in order that we have absolutely perfect efficiency in terms of allocation of thermoness now that means Well, I have no idea what that means, but what I was going to say <laughs> is it means I can very slightly improve upon the pencil marking that Mark would have been able to do two seconds into this puzzle. Because what we can now do is let me just get rid of everything apart from my one, which is hard, hard one and correct. So now let me just go back here. Um, and think for a moment that's that's let me think so that means that the digits that are in blue and therefore in yellow I'm almost going to need a notepad to do this you know this is quite complicated because on the on the f f thermo with a double five on its tip let's try it let's try and just do this slowly i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a five and a nine in the other color and then that nine's gonna flip back to, yeah, I'm not explaining this very well, but I'm fine. It's quite hard to be honest, um, and I apologise if everyone's already finished this puzzle and uh, you're just getting cross with me. Um, if I have double five here, that goes with nine. Then I need I need to put the nine on a tip. So let's just put it there. So that becomes nine. This becomes eight because I need to be efficient. Then on then the eight goes on a tip, then the seven goes on a tip, and then the six goes on a tip, and we cycle back to our original five. So the digits that okay, so the digits this gives us are in blue only a five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Right. <laughs> okay. So when we do this exercise again with six as a doubler we're going to have six in the same color. We're going to have the six, we're going to have the nine, we're going to have the eight, and we're going to have the seven. Yes, okay. And when we do it with four, which gets doubled, we're going to have a seven, six, and five. Right, okay, sorry. That was completely straightforward, and I completely wasn't understanding exactly what it meant, but now I think I've got it. So now, whoopsie, unredify this. I can say with some certainty, I believe, that the lowest div... Right, okay, here's, here's something, here's something. Whoa, I'm getting rid of that five. The lowest digit now that exists in this puzzle in a coloured cell is a four. And that four is going to be on the tip of a thermo in a doubled form to count as eight with a bulb that equals a seven.
So there is one of that digit. There is one four. There's a five on the double five one. And a five and a five on the four one. So there are two fives. There's a six on the doubled one. Oh, there's a six on the four one. When I say the four one, I mean the, I mean the cycle that has a double four. So sorry, there's a six. The one that has a doubled six, obviously that has a six in it. There's, there's definitely a six in the one that has a double four on it. The one that has a double five has a six in it. So there are three sixes. There are three sixes in our colored cells. In the sevens, uh, there, there's one on the four because the double four needs something one beneath it. So there is a seven on the four. There's a seven on the double five seek cycle. And there's a seven on the double six cycle. So there are three sevens in the color. Well, no, okay, I need to be more precise. I've, I, I'm now absolutely convinced that anyone who is following along my train of thought here is probably just as mad as I am. But I, I think I said something that might have misled you. I think I might have said there are three fives, say, in the coloured cells. That's not right. That's not right. There are six. Because, because everything that's in... Let, let me just try and explain again. I'm going to do this again because I think it's just really hard to do it because every cycle that I'm doing here has a different implication. So the five and the nine mean that there must be a a 9-8 thermo, there must be an 8-7 thermo, there must be a 7-6 thermo, and there must be a 6-5 thermo. Now if we look at this, obviously I've got two fives here, but these cancel out, they're one in each colour. But this is just the five cycle, and we know that there must be a five on the cycle that has a doubled four in this position as well. So there are two so there are two fives in orange and two fives in blue in in the overall coloured cells. So there are four fives altogether in the coloured cells. And because there are three sixes and three sevens, or to put it a different way, because every single cycle, every one of the three cycles I've identified has a seven in it, there are six there are three three sixes in orange and three sixes in blue. There are three sixes, three sevens in blue and three sevens in orange. Eights, eights are definitely in the double five cycle. And eights are definitely in the double six cycle. But eights are not in the double four cycle. So there are altogether four eights in the coloured cells, two for each colour, and nines Wait, nines there are, yes, nines there are four in the coloured cells altogether, two in each colour, because when we double the five, we get ten, and that has a nine slipped underneath it on its bulb, and when we double the six, we get twelve, and we can slip a nine under that, although it's not very close, but that's what we need to do in order to create the, the right length of cycle. So, <sighs> After an hour, I can delete all of this, but I can now, so I now know I've got one four, two fives, three sixes, three sevens, two eights, two nines, and hopefully whatever number of digits it, I just added up to is 13. Let's just check that, one four, two fives, three sixes, three sevens, it is. Two eights, two nines is 13 digits. So we are getting somewhere. It's just very, very hard. So, right, it's very, very hard to understand what is going on. But, 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 <laughs> do I do, do I, do I give J. Dyer the plaudits thing? I'm not sure. I'm more sure than I was that I'm going to solve this because I think I have starting to understand it. But, on the basis this video ever is, does see the light of day, let me just stop at this point and say, what an extraordinary brain we're dealing with here. J. Dyer, take a bow. How do you come up with this stuff? 
almost certainly there is a, a more intelligent way to understand this than the way I am I'm explaining it to you. And that's probably how you do this. But I do think we have got somewhere. We have now identified absolutely precisely the contents of the blue cells and ab well, as a set and absolutely precisely the contents of the orange cells as a set. And all we've got to do, and the thing is, if I can get a digit, if I can get a digit in a blue or an orange cell, it will be very powerful because let's say I knew that digit was a five. Then either this has to be a super efficient four five thermo, or this has to be a doubled five with a nine slipped underneath it. So the moment I get a digit, I'm going to be really able to limit limit that thermo, like really able, because it's not like normal, where if this was a five, this could be a one, two, three, or four. Absolutely not in this. That because we need our cycles to be efficient, we have to we have to have very close thermos all the way through. Now we also know that because I did this with my maximum number of doublers, which is three, one of these tips in row two has to be a doubler. And we know it's a double four, a double five, or a double six. And the same is true in this row, and the same is true in this row. So I wonder now if the correct course of action might be, <laughs> this is a bit sad. It's a bit sad to do this, but it might be to remove our coloring. Because what I'm thinking is I now, I now have a handle on what the orange and blue cells are. And what I'm wanting to do is to try and work out where doublers live in the puzzle. And for, for example, because I know one of these tips in row two is a doubler, I know these five cells are not doublers, which is definitely not something I could have said uh, a few minutes ago. So, okay, I'm going to risk this. I'm going to get rid of all my highlighting. And it's a bit sad because I've now seems to have, I now seem to have done even less than I'd done before. And I'm going to take the, take to the task of identifying where in this puzzle doublers can possibly live. And because I know one of these cells is a doubler, none of those cells are doublers so I will award them the moniker of green. Now the same is true in this one of the, the tips in row five must be doubled so none of these cells can be doubled. That are. Um, now the same must be true in this row which was my other splendid Melchard. Um, oh, that's a naughty. Uh, this is where I'm going to get into trouble. That cell was not part of my set, was it? <laughs> so although that is a tip, it's not one of the cells in row eight that has to be um, that has to be doubled. They relate to the bulbs that exist in columns two, five, and eight. No, that's that's total nonsense. That one does relate to this bulb. Ah, what's going on? No, okay, yeah, no, that's total nonsense. Ignore me, ignore me. One, two, three. I only get four green cells, I think, in that row. Okay. Ooh. Ah, I've, I've got something. I've got something real. That is a doubler. And that's a doubler because of the nature of what we've discovered. So in this column, the question is, 
where does our doubler live? <laughs> where does our doubler go? Um, a strange question, but it is a good question because because we know that there is a doubler in the tips in these rows, I was able to greenify certain cells. Now, the question to ask is, can we ever put a doubler on a bulb in this puzzle? And the answer to that is absolutely not because of those cycles we identified. So let's tr let's think about a cycle again. I don't know which one we, let's do the, the seven, the one that had four on the end of it. So four and seven. We know that in order to fulfill it or to create enough thermos from this difference, I need, so this is counting eight, don't forget, and this is counting seven. So I need to have a seven, six cycle. I need to have a six, five cycle, six, five thermo. I need to have a five, four thermo. So I create, I create four thermos of this relationship. Now, what would happen if I suddenly decided, ah, I'm going to double this five? Well, the answer is nothing good because the consequence of that is to throw all my ability to create loads of thermos off the back of this doubler completely into disarray because this is not a valid thermo anymore and never could be given that we needed there to be just one difference between the tip and the, and the, and the bulb in order to create our four thermos that we knew we needed at least. I mean, we were struggling to get up to our, our quota, our quorum of 13 thermos. And we were only quorate eight when we had three doublers, which had to be four, five, six, and where we had the very specific differences between tips and bulbs in each case. So we cannot have doublers in bulbs and if we can't have doublers in bulbs what that tells us is in this column there is only one possible solution which is that that is a doubler and if that's a doubler we still don't get digits from this but we do get greens we get lots of greens because now we can green all of those ah no I can green that as well, of course, because that is a one and I can't double the one twice. And now I can double, I can double that. Because where does the doubler go in this column now? It cannot go in a bulb. It just cannot. Everything else seems to be greened. I don't, Let's double check. Have I understood that correctly? That that that's in row five. That's in row two. That's in row eight. So they simply cannot be doublers because the doublers in those rows are going to be taken by the the ends of the thermos. That can't be a doubler because we've already identified the double one. So that must be a doubler, and that's a double three, and that gets me a whole load of stuff. All of these become. green. Does that make sense? Uh, no, I've only got one, I've only got one other three and it's already green for some reason. Oh, that's because of this row. So, okay. Sorry, I know I'm poor. I know I'm, I'm not speaking as because I'm trying to understand. Um, oh dear, I'm not I'm not getting this. Uh, do I? I'm noticing I've only got one. Yes. Okay, that's got to be green, doesn't it? That. that yes. That, that does have to be green because that is the bulb of, you know, of one of the important bulbs in, the, in these columns. And for the reasons I just explained when we looked at the cycles before, we can't start doubling bulbs in the important cells. So that's green. Now that means that I've got a red cell and it's either a red two or a red nine in this column, which is interesting in only that it allows me to green those. 
So we're getting very close, look, to identifying, you know, other red cells. So I know one of the, I know, I know one of these is red for certain. I know one of these is red for certain. And I know one of, one of those is red and there are four of those. So literally everything left in this row is, is red redifiable and from a sudoku perspective i know that oh yeah i've got swordfishes on sixes and sevens haven't i ah got it yes right this must be right this must be right yes remember when we identified the nature of the digits that we've got to put on the thermos, we have got to put on one, four, two, fives, three sixes, three sevens. I've got to put three sevens. Oh, it's hard because my, 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 my highlighting's gone. But I had to put three sevens in the tips in this row, this row, and this row. Now, what I can't do is put two sevens in the tips in this row, for example, because obviously that will break the rules of Sudoku. But I know I've got to put three sevens in, in the in the coloured cells. And I appreciate this is really it's it might be hard if you're not if you weren't following along very closely with what I was doing before, this will seem bonkers. But remember, I mean I'll just reinstate the highlighting just for a moment because I can I know what I was doing in that regard. It was these cells here. There should be 13 of them. Yeah, I don't know whether I used blue or orange. Doesn't matter. Let's make those blue. And then the orange cells were the bulbs in these. This, 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 this. Bingo. Like that. This was the pattern of digits that had to be the same digits. So the blues had to be the same digits as the oranges. Those oranges don't look very nice, do they? Anyway, uh, they look too close to red to me. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, they have to be the same digits. And we know that in the blue digits, I've got to include three sixes and three sevens. Well, again, because I can't put two sevens in any one of these blue rows, I've got to allocate one seven to row eight, one seven to row five, and one seven to row two. Where does the 7 go in row 2 in blue? I've got a 7 there and a 7 there. The only cell I think that can be blue, uh, can, that can take a 7 is that one. So that's a 7. I'm going to... I hope you don't mind. I'm going to get rid of the blue highlighting now because I, I'm going to find it really confusing. I'm just going to check I didn't inadvertently get rid of... You see, I am. I'm getting... Now I'm getting rid of... I'm now getting rid of green highlighting, which I really don't want to do. Oh, this is a nightmare. Uh, so I'm going to have to highlight these cells individually and debluify them. So I, I retain my my greenification. I'm going to do the same for my oranges. So let's get rid of that. And this has to be a seven by sort of swordfishy type logic, isn't it? Now seven, that means one of those is a seven by Sudoku type logic, one of these is a seven. Um, and that means, what does that mean? So the seven, the seven in a tip, doesn't that have to go with a six in a bulb on the logic that we were looking at before? A seven in a tip is never a double digit. The only double digits that appear in tips are fours, fives, and sixes. So the seven must go with a six in its bulb because it has to be efficient. Okay. But okay. But now, now I'm going to switch the swordfish round. Because remember, for every digit that I 
I've allocated to the tips, that digit exists in a bulb in one of these columns, column 2, column 5 and column 8. So I need to put a 7 into a bulb in this column. So it doesn't go there, look, it goes in one of those two cells. Um, and I, because I need three sevens, I've got to put a seven either here, here, or here in column five. Mm, don't think I can, do I know which of those is right? Don't know. In this column, I can't put a seven in those squares. Aha, I can't put a seven here by Sudoku. Oh, yes, it's okay. <laughs> I can't put a seven here. I was about to get very angry with Jay about this because I was about to say, I can't put a seven here. And then my brain said, you can because you could have double four. And that would be true, except here I can't have a double four, because if I had a double four here, and that is one of the valid tips of the thermos, that's going to put two doublers in this box. So that doesn't work. So the seven that must exist in this column, in a bulb, is there. So that's a seven. Ah, rotten thing indeed. That's annoying, because now this square does have the ability to be double four. So that either this is, a, this is an efficient thermo, and this is an 8, or this is a naughty thermo, and it's got a double 4. Now, oh, bobbins. Right, OK. Um, hmm. So what do we do with that knowledge? There is a question for us. The answer is I don't know, but what I'm going to do first before I do anything else is I'm going to think about the fact that I know not only have I got swordfishes on sevens in these rows and these columns, I have the swordfishes on sixes as well. I need to put three sixes into these, these uh, the, the, the sort of important cells we identified in rows 258, columns 258. So. Where do we do that? Oh no, hang on, I'm going to put seven in one of those two cells first. Um, I have to put a seven. I've got... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, it's starting to rain really hard outside and it's gone very dark in my room. But I'm not going to let that put me off. I'm going to just, let me just think a bit hard about sevens for a moment on the basis that I ought to. Where is the seven in this column is what I'm wondering. Because by us... If, before I move on to swordfishes on sixes, let's go back to swordfishes on sevens. I need there to be a seven in a bulb in this column. I do, because there are three sevens in bulbs, in the important bulbs. Well, that cannot have a seven in it anymore because of this seven. So the only places I can put sevens are in those two cells. Now these cells are now aligning, so there must be a seven in this row does it have to be in a tip? It, it does have to be in a tip. Yes. Um, so there's, this is mad. This is absolutely brutal, by the way. It is hard. This is really hard. It's one of the most interesting puzzles I've ever done. If I actually get this puzzle, like, done, edited and uploaded in time, this needs to be a live premiere because this is so, it's so mad, this. But... In this row, there must be a seven in a tip. Because of the swordfishes, we've got interlocking swordfishes in the rows and the columns. So, so given there must be a seven in a tip and it can't go in any of those, it must go in that one. Now, does that mean that's a six? Oh, it's not a doubler, so it must be a six to be efficient. 
but by the same token surely well, that means that's not a seven so this is a seven and that makes sense because i do need a seven in in a tip in row five okay yeah that would have been the simpler way to think about that there must be a seven in a tip in row five the only place available is here now seven seven what does that mean this is <laughs> is that a six that's seven is never doubled oh Ah, oh, it doesn't tell me about that. You naughty puzzle. Right, seven is never a double digit in a tip because we know the only tips that get doubled are fours, fives, and sixes. So this is green, which means that the red cell, or the doubled cell in this, box, in, in this row is in one of these two cells, which means that those two turn green. So one of these is doubled. One of these is doubled. It could be this one, annoyingly. How many sevens have I got? Loads. I've got two. I can get the seven in this box. Ha! Another seven. Seven is never... Seven's, ne seven's never doubled on a tip. So that's green. So where's my doubled seven? Where's my doubled seven in this puzzle? There must be a doubled seven. That's what the rules say. Uh, it's that one, I think. It can't. It can't be these. Apparently, it can't be double. You cannot double a seven in a tip. That can't be a doubled seven because there's a doubled two or a doubled nine over here. So that's a doubled, oh, this is lovely. That's a doubled, that's the only doubled seven that can exist in the puzzle. So this is now not doubled by, in fact, look, we can undouble all sorts. Oh, look, this is going mad. This is going crazy. That's become doubled, but not, this is all. This is doubled now. So that, wow, <laughs> this is a double tip. So that's a four, five, or a six, not a six. Um, it's, Oh, this is just so clever. Let me ask you a question. Is that a doubled four? No, because double four goes with seven. That was how we created that cycle. So that's a five. With doubled five, we know goes with nine. So there's a nine over here. This is completely mad. This digit now is not, well, that, it's stopping that being doubled. So, oh. That's huge. That means it can't be four. So that's got to be eight, which means, oh God, it's lightning outside. Um, this then is now a, well, that's a double tip. So that is four or six only because it can't be, um, oh, it can't be four again because that would double four. We know adds is, is eight. So it needed to go with seven on its cycle. And it can't so that's got to be a six which means this is a nine because we know that double six went with nine to create our our magic so there's a nine in one of these there's no nine there look i still haven't done any thinking at all about my x-wing on sixes not my x-wing my my um, swordfish on sixes which I am quite excited to explore. But can we do, oh, I can play six by Sudoku. Oh, this is good. I can play six by Sudoku here, which took the position of a nine. And now I've got two digits on natural thermos which must therefore be efficient thermos and these digits are going in and it's so lovely because it's not it's not creating any clashes which does suggest that this isn't total nonsense what we're doing right what are these cells then this is a two or a four this is a two or a four don't know if you can hear that rain it's going crazy outside 
I think the Sudoku gods are getting cross with me for getting close to finishing this puzzle. Um, look, that's a five, so those turn green. Whoa. Um, what digits have we not yet? We have doubled and identified one, three, five, six, one, three, five, six, seven, and nine. So it's two, four, and eight that we haven't doubled. Whoa, whoa, big lightning. Um, God, what, well, imagine it like struck my computer or something and this video went wrong. Oh, whoa, I don't know if you can hear that. That's, uh, that's Tokyo God's getting very angry. One of these is doubled. One of one of the tips. Hang on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this while I see it. Those squares are three, four, and five. And one of the oh, this is a seven, is it? So does, do I know what that is? That's a natural digit, so that's got to be a six. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it's Sudoku. That's a six. There's a six down here by Sudoku. So that looks like it could go there. Look, if that's a six, that would be a seven. That would make this a seven. Um, if that's a three, four, if that's a natural three, four or five, that can't, oh, hang on, this is a natural thermometer. Yeah, ah, four in a tip only exists in doubled form in this puzzle. So that's not a four and it's definitely not a three because three was not one of the digits that we allowed ourselves to put into the set of digits that were, you know, in, in, our, in our thingy things. So that's a five and that surely must go with a four here because it, it's just a natural thermo. It's in the it's in the seven cycle. So that's a four. That's a three. And that's a four by Sudoku. So one of these is a four. These two squares are an eight nine pair. This row maybe? Two, four, and Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's, where's eight in this row? Well, it's got to go there because this can't be two or four. So it's like a naked single. So this square is a two now because that can't be a four. That square's a four. That square's a two. Now we know what those digits are at the bottom of column eight. They are five, seven, and eight. And we can probably then start to narrow these down. Um, Okay, let's try and do that. So this is a natural thermo. So this has to be one different from this and one higher than this. And that means it's six, eight or nine, six, eight or nine, all of which work. Oh no, eight doesn't work because we've got the eight is in one of those squares. So that's not eight. So that's not seven. Whoa, jeepers creepers. Don't know. I don't know if that's going to come out on the camera, but hopefully the, the thunder will. Um, this is not seven anymore. So that seems to have to be seven. That's not seven. So this is a five, eight pair. Seven, well, seven can't go with eight now because eight's disappeared as an option. Eight's in one of these squares. So that's got to be, that's got to be the double four. This is, this is just amazing. So this is the double four. This is now green. I'm so anxious to finish this puzzle before the weather, <laughs> the weather destroys the world. Um, right, these are now green. So that one of these, so we've got sort of one of these being a doubler. And we can therefore, we know there's a four in one of these. Somehow that's not resolved. We can, we can write seven into that cell by Sudoku. So this has to be a natural. That's got to be an eight. If that's a natural eight, that's a natural eight by the power of Sudoku because of this eight, nine pair. This is a natural eight by 
resolving our 8-5 pair. 8 goes with 9 on a natural thermo. 9 and 8 get resolved. We've got loads of 8s in the grid, all but one of them, which goes here. Oh, and that forces that to be a 1-4 pair. Well, that's still lovely. This square is nearly a 3 in the... It's a 3. Okay, so that is a 2 by natural thermometerage. Um, that's very lovely and tells us that those squares are 3 and 5, I believe. 3 and 5 have already been doubled there and there, so that's not doubled. That is green, which means this is doubled. So that's a double 8, which means that's not doubled. That's green, which means this is doubled. And we can work out what this is, look, because that is going to be a double two, is my contention. That seems to be the only digit I've not got as a doubled. So that double two becomes a four, which means this has to be... <laughs> That's magnificent. It becomes a four. And that cell can't be six, seven, eight, or nine, so it's forced to be five. Oh yes, five, three go into the grid. This needs to be a two by Sudoku. This is a three, four pair by the power of magic. What's, what are these squares then? They are three and something. Three and six, so oh, we can just write those in. That's got to be a six. That's got to be a three. That's got to be a six. Uh, these have got to be 4 and 5, which we can fill in. 5, 4. These squares down here are 1 and 9. This is a 6 on a thermo. It's a natural thermo, so that needs to be 5. That needs to be 5. These squares are 4 and 9. Oh, that's not resolved. Bother. What's that digit then? 4. Four. It is four, not put four in that column. So that's gonna do it then. Four, nine, nine, one. One here by the power of Sudoku. Two, three, and six, that's a three. That's a two, that's a six. This is a four, this is a one, this is a one. This is a four, this is a three. <laughs> and that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. I don't believe it. I have solved it. It's taken me a very long time. Um, have I solved it? I mean, this is the question. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes staring hard at this. I'm going to click tick first. Yes, yes. But what I'm also going to do, though I am tempted to stop the video just to stop the lightning striking our house or something, um... But what I want to do is I want to actually de-greenify the grid. Let's de-greenify the grid. Let us go back to our sets now. So we'll make those blue. I can't remember what order I did it in originally. I'll make these orange. Delete the overlapping cells. Make sure our bags contain the same things. Delete the other overlapping cells. So we've got two orange ones there. So we should find two blue ones. One of them is there. One of them is there. So they get uncolored. That was a red digit in the end. The three matched with this, didn't it? So they get uncovered. But that was red in the end. Um, the nine here, that matched with something, it matched with that nine. So that gets uncolored, although that became red in the end. It's a bit of a theme here. Obviously, as Jay Dyer was putting the puzzle together, as you can sense the role some of these givens were playing, that two is a given. So there's probably a given two in in blue yes there okay so now if we study 
what we've got left thermometer wise i am anticipating we just have doubled four doubled five doubled six each with their special underlapping digits and then every other thermo is a one cell thermo to allow us to create the room that we needed in order to fill the thermos with just the perfect gaps i mean the execution of this jay is this is one of the greatest the greatest puzzles we have ever shown on cracking the cryptic it is stupidly clever um i know the adjective stupidly sounds strange but um well it's just it is absolutely magnificent to to have the idea that this is possible and execute it with this sort of utter genius behind it is it is amazing it is just amazing. I mean, talk about book-worthy puzzles where you can expect an email <laughs> about this one <laughs> because this needs to go in a book. I mean, this needs its own book. Um, that is just frighteningly magnificent. One of the best puzzles we've ever sold. One of the most difficult. I mean, I, I am so sorry, by the way, as well, for trying to articulate what I was thinking about during during that 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 was probably one of the most abstract solves um, I've ever done on the channel. It's really hard. It was really hard for me to, to, to juggle what was going on with my head with speaking intelligently and articulating it properly. And I'm quite sure I failed miserably. Um, so please don't be too harsh on me for that. But anyway, I hope those of you who have managed to get through to the 96th minute of this video have got something from it um let me know in the comments i do enjoy the comments especially if they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition probably quite a quite a lot of an easier puzzle um with another edition of cracking the cryptic bye for now <laughs>